Hi everyone, it's good to be with you today. Hi there. Facebook Live here with Amanda. Today is Monday the 18th of May 2020. I can't believe it's already like the end of May. <laughs> it's kind of nuts, right? In some respects, time's flying by, but in most respects, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's, kind it's of a weird combination. Out. Yeah. So I'm going to try to find us on Facebook here on my phone so I can follow along. Yeah, I have it up already. Oh, of course you do, because you're 20 years younger than me. <laughs> I saw a really good meme that um, explained like my experience that had like a picture of baby Yoda on one side and it was like what other adults think of you and then the other side was like actual old Yoda and was like what teenagers think of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> I've been watching those progressive commercials with where they're trying to zoom or they're they're doing uh, Facebook Teams or um, Microsoft or whatever. <laughs> and I think, yeah, that's all too real for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're good, I suppose. Well, it's good to be with you all. We're going to start today in, uh, in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter. So you can grab your Bibles if you have those handy. Amanda and I thought perhaps it would be good to talk about patience. And I don't know about you, Amanda, but I'm com kind of coming to the point where I'm, I'm really, I, I started out pretty strong. And for, the, for about six days, I was doing okay. But <laughs> I've kind of hit the wall when it came to, to patience. Yeah. I'm just struggling. And I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm sure that others are struggling here too as well. But. No, I think you're probably the only one. You're, you're, <laughs> you've got to be alone in that, right? <laughs> like Nails extrovert, so it's, that's possible. No, just kidding. We are all there with you. Yeah. Did you know that patience is, is a virtue of the Christian follower and, and evidences love towards others? So in Romans chapter 12, it's actually one of my favorite chapters of all of scripture. Romans is such a rich and deeply developed book. Paul wrote it probably last, and his theology had developed over these years. So we're hearing from a, an aged elder of the church, a wise sage at this point. And he's writing to the church at Rome, which struggles like every church does. And in chapter 12, verse 9, he talks about what love looks like when we're acting in love. And I think a lot of this is really good for us. In fact, I'm only going to read these four verses, 9 through 13. And well, I guess that's 5. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Wow. So I'm going to read these five verses, and <laughs> then we're going to talk a little bit, I think, focusing in on patience. But as you there who are watching us live on Facebook, we would love to hear from you and Amanda's keeping tabs of your comments. Yeah. So Paul says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And then he goes through this list, and Paul likes to write lists, especially when it comes to our Christian actions or behavior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Galatians has a bunch of lists. In his writings to Timothy and Titus, there are a bunch of lists to elders and deacons or leaders in the church. And so he begins another list here. He says, uh, starting at verse 11, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, and share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. So that's rich. There's a lot there. We can't spend 
all you know much much time on all of these but yeah verse 12 be joyful in hope patient in affliction and faithful in prayer of those two things joyful and hope and patience and affliction which one are are you working the most right now? <laughs> uh, definitely the second one. <laughs> uh, yes, I love leading questions. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I I absolutely um like am clinging to hope and looking eagerly forward to many things, but it's definitely right now that patience in affliction is yeah. whew, it's happening a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard. These, these are this um, sharing or joyfulness and hope and patience in suffering. They seem to be almost mutually exclusive, but we know that they're not. They exist right. together. And however, I think they're kind of on the, the, the same continuum, but at, at different extremes. If we're joyful in hope, we're on the, I think, right path. Um, to to experiencing what God has for us in his, in the depth of his love. But there also has to be patience and affliction. So there's both hope and affliction. There's also joy and patience. And so how, as you think about it, Amanda, what is that, what does patience and affliction look like for you? Well, it's funny because one of the things that I've always kind of preached as a philosophy of ministry is that your family, the people within your household and your family are your first ministry. And so it's like um, where it's pretty easy for me to give a lot of patience and grace to people outside my family. A lot of times, even more than it is the ones that I'm living with every day. I feel like that's just kind of increased even more. It's made me realize like, okay, I have a lot of room to grow here. Um, and so it's a balance of both accepting my shortcomings with grace and trusting and seeking God in it to continue growing me in those so that I'm able to practice it more easily um, and not, not just feel like I'm kind of drowning. Yeah, that's good. What I like that you said most of all there was patience with yourself. And I, if I'm misspeaking here, remind me, but I pointed out, I, I think you said, especially as you dispense grace to yourself, that yeah. you're patient in giving yourself grace. I think that's of vital importance. I think that we need to be patient with each other, but I'm not sure ex that's exactly what Paul is talking about here. I think when he talks about our patience in our afflictions, I think in our own endurance of those in afflictions, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, that we are to share with the Lord's people who are in need, and you know, then then we have this outward focus. So it's almost a as Paul teaches here, uh, focus on the inward self and an awareness that we, we are in the time of affliction. Yeah. It's hard to continue to remember that we are in a time of uh, being afflicted. And, and what I mean by that is that we're suffering grief or pain or loss, or sorrow, or something like that, or probably all of those things, Amanda. Yeah. And what's hard as we get down the road, mm -hmm. at least for me, is I forget about that, and then this becomes the new norm, and the way I respond in the new norm is not gracious towards myself, or there's yeah. shame. I, I've been experiencing some, some personal shame as well. Um, you should be doing better. Uh, you you ought to be more gracious, or you ought to be uh, more trusting, or you ought to be more faithful. And then I begin to shame myself. I don't know if that happens to you, but yeah, and I think it's patience and affliction. <laughs> no, and that's such an easy one. Early on in the quarantine stuff, I saw like a lot of kind of 
memes and things on social media going around about, oh, I'm going to do, you know, this and this. And, you know, if you don't come out of quarantine with a new habit or a new, you know, skill, like you've wasted the opportunity. And it's, you know, easy to go to those places and look at the ways we're not measuring up. Um, Mm-hmm. And because we like we like that better, we like kind of the doing and running and accomplishing, rather than sitting with the pain and the grief that we may be feeling. Yeah, you know, I I see those uh, little memes flash across Facebook. You know, I've I'm I've worked out every day since the quarantine. I've lost twenty pounds. I'm eating, and those are all great things. Right. Um, but I'm not doing those things. And then yeah. I beat myself up for it. Like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, here I had a, the, uh, the opportunity to right. find, you know, finally lean into that, those things I wanted to do. Yeah. I've done them. And you think, you know, God, I, I missed my chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of times I think we throw an again in there. I missed my chance again. This is, you know, what I always do. Yeah. So I wanted to, let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, yeah, I want um, yeah, to say, this- I love Betty, what you said on there. Um, Betty uh, said, I am more on the hope side. This is the first time in many years that I can choose to go outside and do things or stay inside. I'm thankful others inconvenience themselves to protect the vulnerable. Mm, awesome. What a great perspective. Yeah. Appreciate that too. You know, Betty also asked about, um, ducks and whether I, uh, whether, whether Jeanette cleans and cooks the ducks that I bring home. The answer to that, Betty, is absolutely not. <laughs> she will not get close to a duck that is uncooked um, and uh, not sitting on her plate beautifully to, to be eaten. So yeah. I clean, I cook, I do everything with those. And fish too. Anyway. As it should be, right? As it should be. <laughs> I love doing the whole, um, from from uh, from wild to plate. Yeah. yeah, I love Heather. Um, the point you made there, and I think it's so true. She said, "You know, it's typical of the mom shaming that's rampant in society too." Mm-hmm. And I think there's so many things um, that yeah. our connectedness helps, but there's also ways like that that it <clears throat> hurts. It's so easy for us to look at people's well curated social media existence and compare like the worst parts of ourselves to the best parts of their their selves and get really stuck in that yeah everybody everybody looks better on facebook uh, yeah you know they they say when you're on tv it adds 20 pounds so everybody <laughs> but everybody looks better on facebook it, it actually takes 20 pounds off of you <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's that idea that everybody looks better from a distance. And when you really get in there, we see, you know, I think there are probably very few people that are struggling in this time. Yeah. What uh, Was it Ortberg that wrote, everybody's normal until you get to know them or something? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and then we find out, no, nobody's really normal. So. <laughs> what a relief. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, I, and I wonder what other kinds of shaming are, are going on when, when we start to lose patience. You know, I can't, yeah. uh, I can't help but feel for teachers in this time. Uh, I heard one teacher say, hey, I, wasn't, I was trained to teach in the classroom. I wasn't trained to teach on the internet. And now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they're finding themselves having to do that. And you know, are they, hopefully, hopefully they're not shaming themselves yeah um, are satisfied with their best as as a dad that has two students at home one in college and one finishing up high school i have the utmost respect and admiration and appreciation for our teachers but you know how about how about uh health care workers as they oh. away from another covid patient who has just died right i haven't i wasn't able to help this person Mm-hmm. Well, in the way that they're having to provide such different kinds of care right now, um, we had our youngest girl had to have tubes in her ears a couple of weeks ago. And so it was so bizarre being in the surgical waiting room and watching all of these people come in to just come into the hospital and have surgery on their own with nobody to support them. And it's just so, you know, so 
stretching. Yeah, well, Jenny just wrote, none of us were trained or prepared to work on work on the internet. And isn't that right? It's hard um, leaving church and pastoring from the internet. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't cover this in seminary, what to do in a global pandemic. Yeah, you'll be surprised that they didn't cover a lot of stuff that we encounter in the church, <laughs> or we encounter in the church. <laughs> right. Uh, so let, let's shift gears a little bit, getting back to patience then. Yeah. What are some of the, the habits we can practice that will help us to be mindful of our, our patience in, in in what did what did uh, Paul not suffering but in, in in affliction in affliction yeah yeah you know one of the things that I found is um, in the times especially where I'm falling short where I'm snapping more at the people that I'm with or just feeling more exasperated by them um, instead of really just treating it as like oh be more kind be more patient. I'm trying to take that as an opportunity to check myself and say, okay, something's going on in here and what, what is it that I need right now? And so it's been a good practice to kind of be more aware of my needs, uh, my emotional needs, my mental needs, my spiritual needs, and try to use um, that and my feelings as a barometer, almost like a you know temperature check. That's fantastic yeah. to, to be aware of our emotional needs. Now, when we, when we talked before, um, when Pastor Perry Fruling was here and he was mm -hmm. talking about managing conflict, his first step was to help us identify needs. And there was a needs, what was that? Um, Hierarchy, she, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. listed all the needs. Uh, maybe we could get Kelly. She might have already posted that here on the, our Facebook page, but I'm. this is a reminder, Kelly. Could we post that again or... Uh, highlight it for people because sometimes we don't know how we're feeling yeah for me i i get to that place where i just i just kind of feel a generalized anxiety or or uh or nervousness or you know i mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i but i haven't really done the work to pay attention to where i'm what's bothering me um you know I keep reading about stage or phase, phase two. We're still in phase one. And yeah. every time I, I hear or read, you know, the governor say, we might not go to phase two at the beginning of June. That, I have a visceral reaction to that. And not that I agree or disagree at this point. That's, that's moot. Right. But thinking about doing this more creates impatience in me. And so mm -hmm. I've got to be aware of that and kind of label, well, okay, when I read, we're going to do another week of, or two or a month of phase one. Ugh, what am I feeling? Yeah. I think that helps me in, in being able to deal with the affliction. Yeah. So well, I and I think the flip side of that too, is we've also been trained to be like, oh, but but then wait, things are gonna open up. We have to like, you know, go back to that. I know I've talked to other people that when we're watching TV shows or movies and we see people living normally and not doing social distance, and we're like, what are they doing? Yeah, it's weird. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Amanda, you were here on Sunday and uh, we were all social distancing and wearing masks, but even, <laughs> Uh, even unknowingly, as we got close to each other, we would move away. I don't know yeah. if you noticed that, but as you know, if I if I needed to hand you a bulletin or show you, here's what our next, you know, we're going to be here doing this, or even when we gathered kind of in a in a in a place to, together to pray, yeah, we were moving away from each other. That I think we're going to have to overcome some of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that, yeah. that's the part that's really wearing, I think. And yeah. That we're not aware of. And so how, how, do we, uh, how do we give each other grace and, and be patient with each other when a friend, all of a sudden, uh, you enter their space and they back up? And you think, what have, what have I done? But it's not personal. So right. again, there's so much here that we could, we could spend hours talking about this yeah probably not helpful <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Well, and I think that's where that personal grace comes in. You know, I'm not great at doing that all the time for me. Um, it tends to be a lot more a hindsight thing, like maybe even, you know, it was rough with the kids at the end of the day, like snapping at them, go to sleep, it's time to go to sleep. And then once there's a little bit of quiet, thinking like, oh, okay, I could have done that better. What's going on here? And so I think, you know, it's rare that we're able to catch those things in the moment. um, So I I would suggest this, and I I think Paul gets to it here at the end. Um, Faithful in prayer. Prayer, scripture reading, silence and solitude, a personal reflection, being able to identify how you're feeling and why you're feeling that way. Those are all things that will help us to be patient in affliction. And then maybe most important, um, doing life together in the community. So I, I think that's of the utmost importance so that we can be there for each other and help keep each other accountable. Mm-hmm. Patience, Jeanette lovingly, and, and I must say it is always lovingly, uh, points out that I'm being impatient. And she has a lot of grace for me <laughs> yeah. in this space. And, uh, <laughs> I think helping each other through this time. You know, one of, one of the greatest gifts for me so far has been doing those video devotions and recording them for the congregation. I get a lot of feedback from the congregation that they're grateful and appreciative. But, and I mm-hmm. enjoy those. But I've... I, I feel a little guilty because I think I'm enjoying them more than they are. <laughs> <laughs> because it connects me when I, when I sit in front of the, the GoPro, I don't yeah. have a camera lens. I see people's faces from our congregation. And right. That has been such a gift that we are united in the mystical body that is Christ. And I think for me, that's one of the greatest gifts to be able to know that we are still connected though far apart. That yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think honesty is a big key thing there. I love Jerry, what you said, um, where she said, I have little patience for complainers, but I live in a very insulated world. And those I know are only somewhat inconvenienced. This makes me feel very guilty. You know, it's not about the guilt. I like, I love your honesty there, Jerry. And I think all of us are feeling a lot of that as well, where many of us are not as inconvenienced as others. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different levels of that going on. Mm. And isn't it just like Satan to find a, our weak spots and poke at him? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those fiery darts. Yeah. yeah. And to say, yep, it's just another way that you're falling yeah. short. Right. You you should feel guilty. Look how great you have it, and you still right. feel bad, or you're still impatient, or yeah, you, you should be. You know, you, you should have lost thirty five pounds by now, and uh, eating only salad or whatever it is. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That, that reminds me, um, a pastor friend of mine said once, Amanda, um, that salad isn't food. It's what food eats. <laughs> well, that, we'll talk about that on Thursday as we wrap up. It's <laughs> another good one. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. That's why people tune in. It's for the wisdom like that, Steve. Yes. Well, here's here's something else. Since we were talking about hunting and and then cleaning and preparing and all that kind of stuff, so um, I believe that there is a place for every one of God's creatures, right next to the mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, people. It's good to be with you. <laughs> Humor also helps. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Especially um, humor, and I would say only humor that's not at the, the expense of others. Yeah, yes. I want to, um, before we move on to announcements, so I love, Jenny, what you talked, what you mentioned there, where she said, rebuilding trust with others will be challenging now that we've spent months being told that everyone we contact is contagious and we need to avoid them. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, Jenny, I think that's profound. And we're talking about for a minute. And not just that physical 
trust, but that uh, the deeper, more vulnerab vulnerable trust being with each other. Um, yeah. That, there's a lot to be said for that. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that'll be hard and, and worth working and uh, diving into. Absolutely. Okay. Some announcements. Yes. Yeah, a couple announcements. <laughs> um, so we do have another week of living room worship planned this week. Um, I also want to encourage you. So it didn't actually happen the way Pastor Corey intended last week. But if you would like a little bit of time of just kind of laughing at um, some technical difficulties and not feeling, feeling alone in that, I encourage you to check out last week's video. Um, my family and I were watching it live and the kids and I, we were all just busting up at, um, you know, just everything from the phone falling over and Pastor Corey was great and patient in it, but um, had some technology struggles, but we'll be up and going with that this week at 7 p.m. here on Facebook Live. And so that's going to be great. Um, we have slated, I think, a Rend Collective collection of songs. And so that'll be really fun to get to see. Um, we also have next Monday, as a lot of you guys may know, is Memorial Day. And so, Steve, I think we are taking a break for that Monday, right? Yeah, I want Memorial Day off so that I can fish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but second to fish are you guys. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. <laughs> we Excellent. Amanda's like, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So we won't be here next Monday at two, um, but that's okay. We still like you guys. We just are going to, you know, encourage everyone to do something different if they can. Um, yes, and, and then yes, do something different and get out. Yes. Certainly get out on, on Monday and there, there are great ways to get out still. Please. Do. Yeah. <laughs> Heather said, we feel so special, Steve. <laughs> And in that, um, <laughs> while you think about that, in that vein, um, Kelly's also reminding us the office is closed on Monday as well, the church office. And so um, just be mindful of that if you're trying to get in contact with staff or things like that. Um, and then other than that, we just kind of have our normal things going on. As always, I encourage you guys to be checking out um, Pastor Steve's devotions, even if you haven't seen any yet, it's not like a season where you're going to miss something if you just jump in now. Um, those have been a great blessing uh, for me personally, and I know for a lot of us on here. Um, and I think that's kind of all of my announcements. Good, and I have one. Um, so the the reopening team is starting to get together. You guys, well, maybe you wouldn't be surprised, but Man, there are a lot of documents to fish through and just a ton of work to do in preparation and, and to plan and provide for procedures and practices. And most of that's informed by the uh, Department of Health and Human um, Resources or whatever it is, and then and the CDC. Yeah. Um, so we're, we have a team uh, three staff members, myself and Lisa Wiegand and Jenny Page, and then three council members, Sandy Steele and Bill Peterson and Jim Honeyman. So the six of us are beginning our work this week. There are two articles that I've given them to read, but I'm going to make these available on Facebook. And when I say I'm going to do that, I'll email them to Kelly and <laughs> <laughs> she'll work her magic. <laughs> she'll work her magic. Um, the and they're both put out by a gospel coalition. And so I, I think they're good resources in this time. Uh, the first article is Church, Don't Let Coronavirus Divide You. Mm. So we all have differing opinions on our practices and procedures and uh, our politics surrounding coronavirus. We just want to be mindful that we're being uh, helpful and united, even when we're when we have differing opinions. We will not let our opinions divide this church. 
And then the second one is a CDC document outlines guidance for reopening of churches. You should have at your fingertips then most of the information that we have. And so you won't be surprised by the procedures and policies that we put in place and practices. And a good reminder for us to be praying for you guys as well. Yes, absolutely. Yep. So uh, I think that's it. If you, we would love to hear from you um, in regard to what you're doing and in helping to be patient during this time of affliction and uh, know that, that we love you, we miss you, we care for you, and uh, we know that we can say the same for us, that you yes. love and miss and care for us. And that's such yeah. a part of the family of faith. It is. Do you want to send us off with a word of prayer, maybe, Steve? I would like to do that. Let's Excellent. pray. Father God, we're grateful to be together as we are on Facebook today. And for those who would watch later, either here on Facebook or on YouTube, may they also have the sense of community and relationship that we share because we are united and brought together in, in the communion of the mystical body of Christ. And so though apart, we are right together in you, Lord Jesus, our guide, our God, our truth, our life, our way. And so bless us into the rest of the, this day and this week that we would love and serve you in it. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. It's been great to be with you. We'll see you again here on Thursday at 2 yep. o'clock. See you then. Love you guys.